Hello, uh, today I'm going to explain how to manage constraints within a mathematical program and to activate and deactivate them in a nice way. So for that, we have this project, the main project, very simple one, where what we have is a set of variable constraints in, in a mathematical program. Actually, we have only two variables, variable one, which is non-negative, same thing for variable two, and a variable which will have will be the objective function for our model. And we have four constraints. One upper bounds in the value of the first variable. Same thing for the second constraint, which cannot be larger than three. Another constraint which upper bounds the value for the summation of those two variables and Last, we have a constraint which relates the objective function with the, the two variables. We don't need to do this. We can just type this within the definition of the variable objective function, but I prefer to explicitly define all constraints. And we have, we don't need this now, what we have is a mathematical program, okay, which we can and what we have is a mathematical program consisting in maximizing the objective function. Okay, so we have in within the main execution, the, the, the first segment will show us the progress window, and the second one will just solve the, the mathematical program. So we can run this procedure, and we get an objective function of 10, and we have values for the variables which are for variable one is four and for variable two is three. Okay, let's imagine we want to override this constraint and, and we want this a, a variable to take a, a larger variable than three if the other constraints allow the, the variable to take a, these other values. So something we can do is to type a very large number which we won't do, but we can do that. We can leave this, or we can just comment this and type one equals one, which will always apply. So actually, if we leave the constraint like this, this constraint won't apply. So we can solve again. This time I will press F6, and we have a new value. So we expect the objective function to be at least as good as it used to be for the first session of, 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 the, of the solving of the model. So we can check now that the objective is 20, and variable 1 is 0, and variable 2 is 10. So variable 2 is so good in terms of contributing to the objective function that we only activate that variable. So this is not a good uh, approach to deactivating this constraint, constraint 2, because if we forget that we did this, we keep developing, and later on along the project development, we will find, or we may find, that the model is not behaving as we expect because we just overrode this and it just remained like that. So I suggest leaving it like that and doing some other thing, which I think is more convenient in terms of, of best, best practices. So what I suggest is you can create a new set, which we will call S model constraint, okay, which we will say it's a subset of one of the predeclared identifiers and in particular we will choose all constraints which is here okay so that in, if now we check and uh, we commit and, and we go to the data uh, of this identifier we will see that as the eligible elements for the subset we have all the identifiers that are actually constraints so we can select which of these are active. So this is better, so that we can now get a subset of all the constraints. But now, for us to, to be able to run the, the, the model properly, we need to change that now we don't want the, the mathematical program to consider all constraints, but only those in this subset we just created. So, constraints, we do this. Okay, and now we can run the model again. Let's just check that. 
I'm going to select this in a new window for convenience. Okay, so in this case, we are using, we remember that we have the constraint number two. Explicitly defined, we haven't uh, commented anything and we are, are not using it. So if we solve it now, at six again, we'll get a value of 20 as we used to have in the second uh, solving. So if we activate the, the, the four constraints, we solve again and we get back the original results. So this is far more convenient. And we can do something, uh, we can go a step further for, for the second convenience. We can come to the S model constraints and imagine we know that all our constraints are going to be contained within this a declaration, deck main model. So what we can do is define the 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 contents of, of this the elements of this set sets as deck main model intersection all constraints. Okay? So one thing we can do is create Another declaration, which is deck constraints to implement in case we are not sure that this constraint is well developed or not. And, and we just want to not change our approach and not come to the, the data page. So if we do this and we press F5 to recompile our model, what we have is that now we close the window get back to the S model constraints. Okay. And we should see now that now we cannot activate this constraint because it's not available anymore. Because it doesn't belong to this declaration uh, where we have our constraints. So in this case but just moving constraints in and out of this declaration, they will belong to this set and out. Uh, therefore, we will there will be a magical program. And one additional thing we can do is let's create a, a page. Hopefully, in, in, in names, we will call it page. And we can do something. We will create a new window again. Go to editing mode. We will create an element. First, we need to sorry. We need to create another another set. This active model constraints. So this model will contain or will be a subset of elements within model constraints, and the initial data will be the very same elements of those contained as model constraints. So this set here contains all constraints with our main model. This is a subset of this one. So we're going to use only as declare as model constraints. So what we can do now and we go back to our bug debug is to a selection element here and to a Element to check, choose by means of check boxes, element of a set, in particular those which we want to be at. Okay. okay. The that will show up here are those contained within the deck main model. Those which we check are those belonging to the S active model constraints. So let's do one thing. Do uh, we go to the user mode. We only activate constraint three. We are solving the model just to get that into account constraints. The constraint that defines the objective function. So we can now and we and we run this and we get another solution and we get the same in this case. So but let's we want to work with the back into our declaration where the model we compile the model we have 
eligible constraints are those that might belong to S active model domain, which are those which are contained in S model constraints. So by means of moving constraints in and out of this, this declaration, we can fill or remove elements from this set. And by activating and deactivating them by means of using the data page of this element, actually use those contained in this declaration that we want. So this allows us to keep constraints out of our model because we're not sure if they're okay or we don't want them to participate. And from this subset, this constraints to it to the objective function, choose one. So this is an additional feature that, or additional approach to adopt to manage constraints. Instead of having those which would, would define or contain in this set, and those of, of, of this model that we want to be active during our solving might be here. Okay, so I hope this is helpful and allows us or allows you to create better developed models using very we have in there. Bye bye.